Welcome. Gary Boyer. Thanks very much. And he just went, if I want to sign a runner, son, I'll sign a bloody racehorse. <laughs> and I was like, all the support staff, you know, in the championship, you couldn't fit them all on the team bus. Yeah. Because there's that many. Yeah. When I went to Blackpool, I could fit them all in my car. And I went, how oh, Jay, seriously, <laughs> mate? We've all got to watch our own kit. And somebody shouted, how did you go on to Stuart Pearce's team? And Brian Rice in the background went, we lost on penalties. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the whole training ground just went, <laughs> right, Jordan, welcome back. All right, pal. I'm good, thank you. Uh, once again, before we start, a massive thank you to Bet365 for sponsoring the pod. Makes all this achievable. Cheers, lads. Sponsored us again as well, aren't they? I think so, yeah. I think, uh, I think there might be another series on its way. Okay, let's okay, go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great news. So, yeah, big thank you again to that. So, what have you been up to, pal? I see you've uh, been back to that shit barbers. Yeah, well, after <laughs> Frank was giving me shit last week. Frank, <laughs> silly old, Fred. Silly old bastard. dad Fred. <laughs> so I've got a 70-year-old guy peppering my trim, and then I've asked the Turks to give us, just take a bit off the top, and they've done me. <laughs> they have done you. <laughs> you just get what you give them with them boys, don't you? So There's no arguments there, is there? No. But yeah. No, when uh, they give the mirror, and they're like, what do you think? And you're like... Class that, mate. Cheers. Yeah. But Cheers yeah, it is what it is. My mate said I look like a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Not over the fringe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's weird. You say your fringe real chopped into. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Nope. <laughs> nope. But I have been scoring hat tricks and pissing Robbie Savage off. So I've heard. That's all we need to talk about. So you played, you played Macclesfield. And obviously there's a lot of history with what's been like said and gone on. So you must have been a bit nervous for that game. No. No? No. Well, we had Shents on last Friday, didn't we? Yeah. Just talking old stories. Oh, I thought it was brilliant. Mad stuff that had gone on. I just thought, this is what I'm about. So I just went on and got that trick. Got that trick, yeah. Yeah. Did, and, and did you get the third goal as well? Was it 2-2 two, two when you got the third? It was. 1-0 up, me. They had a man sent off. So we thought, buzzing, this will be easy. They went 2-1 up. Oh. I got the 2 all. And then scored three two, and it was last minute, weren't it? Eightieth. Oh, eightieth. So minute. top was off. Tits were out. Ah, oh, chipper. Yeah, everything was going. <laughs> everything tits. was all over the gap, and um, yeah. I can't but, believe you still wear them. You wear them vests at yeah. that level of football. Yeah. That, what that, do you that's mean? Not, that level of football. <laughs> that's no. I don't mean that as a as a put down. Yeah, we have to get tracked. So what? Like how far you do your running and stuff like yeah. that? Like that. Didn't realise you could do that at Sunday League. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apparently after the game, Savage has stormed off. He won't be happy because I said I was going to Dublin dressed as Savage. He's kicked off, sent a message to Jono, and then I've gone and scored that trick and beaten 3-2. Brilliant. And that's them out of the title race, I Should think. be now, yeah. Are you so, 16 points clear? With two games in hand. Two games in hand. On them. On them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah they're like 10th now or something. Oh, there. I'm lucky, Robbie. <laughs> needs to put some more money into that club. <laughs> it definitely doesn't. It's mint. Is it? Yeah, proper smart. But Are you, is that you? Is that you thinking about next season? <laughs> <laughs> you need a striker, Gisabella. So yeah, just going back to Shents. Uh, yeah, we went back to a little bit of old school, didn't we? Enjoyed it. Yeah, really good. Really good. Um, we, <laughs> I think we had the Footman. Contact us, Contact yeah. the, uh, yeah. the podcast, innit? If he wants to pay some dough, we'll do it here. I, I think, well, well, you don't want to see my feet. I know I've mentioned them before, <laughs> but they are horrendous. I told you he's a real person, though, because he has actually got in touch with Shents, hasn't he? He's like, he said, why have you not tagged me in this? <laughs> That's <laughs> what he said, like, yeah. He was buzzing about it. Yeah, yeah, he was like, no tag, lads, no. So, Oh, we'll have to tag him in it. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get a tag on this week. Yeah, so you was a bit dubious about Shenton coming on, weren't you? But enjoyed yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, just because, like I say, it was, it was more it was more your mate and you you knew all about him and you play with him and, and most weeks gimped. you're a mute. <laughs> <laughs> most weeks you don't speak, so I was worried what I what I was gonna say to him, but <laughs> no, it it was nice to uh it was nice to have your contribution that one that week, week one week I've been ill for. And the week that I didn't turn up actually. So yeah, I'll give you that. All right, cheers. What have you been up to? 
What have I been up to? So I've been carrying on my runs. I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram. Yeah. So I'm up to... I was oh. supposed to come with you, wanna? I? Yeah, we've got here. Fuck you've that. not even sponsored. So Chris no, Spencer... No, I will. I said... Chris Spencer has mentioned that you hammered him for being a fat shit and he's done 100k <laughs> and you've still not sponsored us. Yeah, but I said when he completes it, then I'll put it in. Well, that's no good because we're handing the money over on Saturday when we complete right, it. I'll so you need, to, yeah, Sorry, you need Chris. to do it today. Sorry, Chris. I've... I did say I'll, I'd get into him for you. So yeah, I'm up to uh, I'm up to 140k. I'll do 100 like I do 5k today, and then my last run will be Saturday morning, where we're going to do 5k around Burnley, and then actually take the money into the charity to give them. I think we've raised about 14, 1500 quid, which is brilliant. Which Decent. Will... I won't run around Burnley with 1500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <No>. Christ. <laughs> well, I might go and buy an house. <laughs> <laughs> my row of hours is there for that um so yeah no it's been um it's been a lot tougher than i thought not so much the runs have been hard it's been the consistency of getting to 5k and then stopping because some days i felt really good and i thought oh, I, could do, I could do 10k here but then that means the next day i have a day off and that's not the challenge the challenge is 5k every day so it's that consistency of doing it every day so every time i've got to 5k i've had to stop and then start again the next day. I'll be honest, I could not be asked. <laughs> no, well, we've had... Like, I, I think about it all the time. I need to do something for charity. I just can't be asked. So I, I just I just wanted to do it. I've had a, real, like I say, I had a really good year last year, and I just thought, start this year in the right way, giving back to, to people, to other people who aren't as fortunate. So, yeah, no, it's been good. It's been tough, because you've had all the, the snow and the freezing cold weather. You've had the storms. And obviously, it's the middle of the January transfer window, so I've been really busy with work driving here, there and everywhere and then you get home and then you think, oh shit, <laughs> say it's eight o'clock at night, off. it's chucking down outside, freezing cold and you think, I've still got to do my run. So I've had to get my gear on at like half eight, nine o'clock See, that's where I'm not doing it. I'm blue biscuit <coughs> bed. I know. I'll but... do 10K tomorrow and then not do 10K tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where, like, that's the challenge. That is, that's been the hard bit. Like not so much the runs, just the consistency of doing it every day and not missing, but yeah, it's well, been good. Not all heroes wear capes, eh? That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> but yeah, we've got um, we've got a guest on this week. Gordon got a really good guest. I think he'll have some um, bit different to Shents, isn't he? Bit different to Shents. Yeah, I don't think there'll be as much swearing. <laughs> uh, I don't think there'll be much talk about a footman. No, or uh, or biting fans. <laughs> I don't know. He might have done. He might have bit a fan or two. I don't know. But yeah, so we've got. Um, We've got a cracking guest, so we will introduce him. Yeah. Welcome, Gary Boyer. Thanks very much. How you doing, pal? Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah really thanks. impressed with what you got here. Cheers, mate. Thanks for turning You're up at last anyway. No. <laughs> not him <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you turned up one minute late, so imagine that, one of your players in your dressing room. Uh, I was on time. It's a fine, isn't it? Time. You Have got you seen to the, the size of this place to walk all the way through here? Oh, so you was in the building on time. I was time. in the building on time. It's you like did. being at the training ground, isn't it? <laughs> no, I was in the I building. Do you do that you on match days, the lads like you're I was late. I've been speaking to fans for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No fans I was in there. the car park. <laughs> speaking to Babs. <laughs> yeah, Babs. Yeah. Speaking to Babs. I was at the butty van. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, welcome, mate. Great Thanks to have so you. Much. Yeah, good. Very good. Yeah, so it's um it's not a bad. It's nice, setup, yeah. Is it? I like it. Really good. Top draw. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll uh we'll get into it. We're gonna start off with your <laughs> playing career. All right, go on. <laughs> take the next that, that, that's finished. <laughs> the next yeah, what, happened, what happened there? Uh, well, she started on. off non-league, didn't you, Hereford? Yeah. Um, well, no. Westfield. Westfield, yeah. So I was. Uh, I just left school, and my dad had gone to play for Hereford as player coach, and um, I was a spotty seventeen-year-old and saying, "Well, I'm better than him in your team," and he's going, "You're not." I was going, I was you on to your dad telling him? Yeah, I was, I was telling him, I'm going, I'm better than him. And he's going, you're not. And so we moved to Hereford as a family. And he made me go and get a job. And I was selling insurance for an insurance company. I best not name him, I don't <laughs> um, And so I was selling insurance. I was playing non-league. And uh, I was playing for a team called Westfields in Hereford. And then uh, we were just playing and working. And then uh, at work... Uh, they were going to make someone redundant. And I went home and said, a bit worried, I'm going to lose my job or something. And my old man now was 
manager. It took o- it took over, and he said, uh, "Well, why don't you ask if you can go part time and come and be part time with us?" So I was like, All "Right, perfect, okay, brilliant." Yeah. So I'd like work sort of like half past eight till ten o'clock selling insurance, train till half twelve with Hereford. And then go back to work in insurance oh, no. until no. half past five at night, yeah. and then catch catch the bus home. Like, and that was that was me for the for a year, two years until uh, uh, I, I was lucky. I got spotted at Forest, but when I was at non-league playing for Westfields, we played against Hereford when my dad was manager. I was playing for Westfields. Right. And how, the, how did you play? I was all right. Was was you better than the people in his? In yeah, his team? well, there was a lad called Paul. So there was a couple of lads called one was called Paul Maddy, right? Yeah. Who playing in midfield, and the game's going on. And he was a fullback, were you? And I was playing in midfield. I uh, could uh, play fullback or okay. midfield. And um, my old man's managing, and he's giving Paul Maddy some from the touchline. Like get. Whatever he said. What type to you? No, no, not to me. <laughs> Imagine to me. snap that little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he probably was actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thinking about it now. And this poor Maddie, bless him. He went. I wish he had shut the up, like yeah. you know. And I'm stood next to him. I went. You want to try living with him? <laughs> and his face dropped. Oh, like, so he didn't realize. He didn't realize. <laughs> he didn't realize I was his lad, like you know. He went, oh no! Hey, you're, oh, of course it's you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> don't hey, tell him. Yeah, don't tell hey, him. Don't tell him. He was saying, saying, "Oh, sorry about that. I'm just a bit of banter, and, <laughs> I, and I'm doubled over. I'm only seven in, yeah. and he's panicking. Like, you can't thinking, tell your dad, though, can you? No, can't I didn't tell no you can't. <laughs> he did tell me that. We obviously we touched on touched on Jordan in a minute, like banging in the goals, only, banging in the goals. Should be getting a move. You need an agent. That's what I mean. A good one, though. Yeah, you need a good one, yeah. <laughs> I have to yeah, got one, though. I'm too old me. and I'm just happy where I am. You're not so. moving from there now, are you? I don't, well, to be, it works with Jono, so he, can't, he, he can't leave Radcliffe. No whoa, 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 I can't. If anyone's listening, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not be putting that out there. Yeah, but I am quite happy where I am, so I'm not bothered. Good lad. Yeah, he's banging in the goals. Yeah. So yeah. So so you then you you move with your dad then to Hereford. So that like was doing that. Your part yeah. time. So he didn't just sign you because he was his son. You no. was you was good enough. No, he, he signed me to stop somebody getting made redundant. <laughs> that was the main reason. Was it? No. He said, "Look, this is, it'll keep someone in a job there, and we'll pay you a bit of money there." And so, oh, so he's doing it. the right thing then, weren't he? Yeah, he was all right with that, and then. Uh, as he tells the story, if he was sat here, he says someone got injured. Steve Devine, who looked after me, and I worked with him later on at Derby. He's a physio, Steve Devine, now as well. He, he retired playing and become a physio, and he was looking after me. Well, he got injured. And my old man, as if he was telling the story now, he says, we've got no one else, so you're going to have to play. You know, that real yeah, yeah. confidence <laughs> booster. Yeah, dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was always just trying to keep your level like so I made my debut as an uh, 18 year old against Aldershot in the Football League so that was me and then end of that season um, I'd played about I don't know 14, 15 games for Hereford and uh, got got scouted at Forest and, and, and went to meet <laughs> went to meet the legend that is Brian Clough so, yeah how, how was that? oh mate oh dear me what league were they then? In at the beginning, Forest were in the as it was now the Premiership the Premier, Division right, One. Okay, so That's my dad had played move. for Forest for years and years and years and yeah. won, won the European Cup with him twice, as he likes to remind me. Yeah, and so he he rang me at work. I'm at work because it was during the summer, and so I went back to then work, but you know, all in the insurance, in then. the insurance, yeah. Monday to Friday all day, and so he said. Uh, Ask work if you can have the afternoon off. I'll pick you up. I went, well, why? And he said, just do it. So I put the phone down, went to my boss, went, can I have this afternoon off? And he went, yeah, why? I ain't got a clue, but my dad's picking me up in 10 minutes. Is that all right? He says, yeah, yeah, sound. And my boss was great. Right? Yeah. So I get in the car with my dad. I said, where are we going? He says, I'll tell you later. So I'm thinking, I haven't done anything wrong. I want out at the weekend. Yeah. So it can't be anything <laughs> like that. I was... And it was out of season. So we get halfway up the motorway and he says, uh, we're going up to Nottingham. Uh, we're going to meet Brian Clough. So I'm like, right, why? <laughs> I think, why are we meeting Brian Clough? Yeah. And he says, oh, they're interested in signing it. So from the rest of the journey, I was just absolutely bricking it. Going, yeah, I was going to say. Oh my God, I'm 18. Yeah. 
Like, so we get to meet him at this hotel and sat down and my dad's there. It's a bit like this, really. My dad's there, Brian Clough's there and his assistant manager was sat there and chatting away and he's gone there. So, you know, come to work for me. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm Do you have an insurance up. company? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't know you had an yeah. insurance company. And knees are knocking and what have you. And it's, he said, uh, what are you good at? I just, mine went blank and I was like, at football? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, at football. Yeah, I was like, oh, what have I just said? Was he, like, was he, like, an intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you're, you're nervous was anyway. Going oh, to a prem team, he and was, then yeah. Brian oh, Cuss sat there. Yeah. He was a genius, magnificent. Was it? Yeah, he was brilliant. Such a personality. It was like, yeah, my dad. It was the first time I've seen see my dad in that. My dad was a little bit. Hi, boss. Yeah, no, boss. Well, I was going <laughs> to oh, say. Hello. I was going to say like when when you played under your, under your dad. Did 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 your dad take any things off? Off Brian that that you noticed. Oh my god! Um, yeah, yeah, loads, loads. Standards, values, how you behaved, being how you time. played, being on time. <laughs> um, just you know the the way we played. You right. know, he, he, Brian Clough. Brian Clough would put a ball down in the dressing room on a towel in the middle of the dressing room, and no one would touch it. Right. So you imagine getting to the ground that. Half one, quarter yeah. two, and there's a ball in the middle. And you know what? Players what do you do it on purpose to, to yeah, see if yeah, anybody it, touched it? it. That's no, getting no, booted no, around, isn't it? It's, just, it's oh, getting right. booted around. <laughs> no one touched it. Right. And uh, this is what my dad told me, but then I'd heard other people told it and see it. And he'd just come in at 10 to 3, no, no presentations and tactics, and go, that's what we play with. When we've, when we've got it, pass it to a red shirt before he's played in reds. And when we haven't got it, get it back as quick as we can and walk off. Well, that's it. That, <laughs> that's simple, isn't it? That's simple. Yeah, what, what, more, what more do you need? Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's the game. And uh, all this high pressing and what is it? Counter pressing. Yeah, and yeah. That's what Brian Clough was saying all sometimes, those years ago. Sometimes, though, like you've heard the phrase, bullshit baffles brains, yeah, it? Yeah. And sometimes a footballer yeah. can't take in all that information. They just want to go, do this, do that. Yeah. Sim- and, it's the, and then they'd play. Na- naturally don't they yeah. I suppose well like you say it's not all that information overload is it to go right what did he want me to do when I've got it here and where where do I get next yeah. but it was brilliant so you know they kept the game simple and just took the pressure off the players and I, I noticed that from like my dad and then tried to do try to do the same management yeah you know just little things like you know when you've been beaten and you come in and you think oh we're going to get it today Players are thinking, oh, keep your head down. Yeah. You take them for a walk or go to the cafe and have, you know, a cup of coffee and walk back, see you tomorrow, and bump and get on with it. Well, I was going to ask you this. I've heard that when you oh. was at Blackburn, you used to take the lads out on your own money. Were they nights out or were they no, I used coffees to do, and stuff? No, I used to do a couple of big socials where I get everyone involved. So we take all the staff, ground staff. Yeah. All the girls that worked there in the laundry and behind reception, chef used to take them out. And uh, yeah, we used to have a couple of them a season, maybe into Manchester. And Bet there's not many managers doing that now, is there? How good's that? Yeah, that is class. Yeah. Well, I used to dart early. <laughs> <laughs> I used sure. to dart early and let them get on with yeah, it. And then, yeah. then I don't see what goes off after that. You know? I think that's the thing. Like when you go out with your management staff, everyone behaves and they're all on the best behavior until the gaffer goes, Right, lads, <laughs> I'm going to give it another hour and then I'm off. And everyone's yeah. like, yes, count down for that hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, fucking thank God he's gone. So, oh, yeah, obviously, obviously you, so you, just going back to, to Forrest, you spent five years there and unfortunately, like, never yeah, yeah. never no. really broke in. No. But who were the players who were who were in that well, first was, team? Then at the, who you were training with or around? Well, we so when I signed um, and... Yeah, like say, Brian Clough said to me, what are you good at? And I was like, well, what am I going to say here? So I panicked <laughs> and said, I'm a good runner. I know I was, I thought I was yeah, yeah. quite a good runner. And he just went, if I want to sign a runner, son, I'll sign a bloody racehorse. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, what, what, can, what can you say? You yeah. can't get yourself out. A That's the perfect answer there, though. I don't know. I didn't have a clue. 
So just left him, just went bright red. And I was thinking, oh, I'm in trouble here. I'm never going to sign for him. But yeah. we mo- so luckily he signed me. And when we moved up to Nottingham, there was a house. There's a house at the back of the forest ground, and all the apprentices are in this side of the the road. Yeah. And then there's a little house in the corner, and they put young pros in there, three or four of us. And there was three of us, and there was me, a lad called Steve Hodder, um, and Roy Keane. So, Why you? <laughs> so, the, so the three of us moved in there and it was just brilliant. The lads were fantastic. The environment was brilliant. I've got and to ask about Roy Keane. Yeah, yeah. So what as would a, he have been? 17, 18? 18, 18, 18, yeah, 18, 19. Just come over from Ireland. Yep. So yeah, it was uh, brilliant days. Brilliant lads. What, what? Tony Laughlin, who's Sean Dyche's, well, was Sean Dyche's assistant. Assistant, yeah, yeah. yeah is he so. still like he is now, like grumpy and funny, sort of, <laughs> with with his own sort of standards that he's he just wanted himself. to win at everything, you know? We'd, we'd train in the morning and go and play tennis or play bowling, and the, there was a group of us, like I say, and yeah. it was so competitive, but it was brilliant, like, you know? What, what and was whoever he... won and whoever lost, one got the ump and the other yeah. one was buzzing like, you know? <laughs> what was his best asset then, Keane? Oh, just his drive, just... his determination. He he was a different player at Forest to United. At yeah. Forest, he was a runner off the off Nigel Clough. Yeah. The, you know, Forest had a simple way of playing into the centre forward and the centre forward would have to receive it and turn. And you'd have midfield runners. Keane had run beyond, and wouldn't he? Keane had run yeah. beyond and Nigel yeah. would slip him in. Forest. Yeah. But then when he went to United, he adopted his, he's more of his a sitter, game and he's more of a sitter and, yeah. and became that passer, didn't he? And and his drive and determination. And that stood out, like I say, first training session amongst the lads. So, but it was great days there at Forest. Oh, bad it, bad it, Brilliant. Right, yeah. Who were the first team lads then? So the first team lads Stuart were... Pierce been Stuart there. Pierce was left back. Right. Um, and I joined in 1990. Yeah. So England had just lost the World Cup semi final oh, on penalties. Yeah, yeah. Guess who missed Gap. one? Stuart Pierce. Yeah, <laughs> he did. That is actually so gone. First. So, so we're Chris, back. Chris Waddle. Chris Stuart Waddle. Pierce. Stuart Pierce. Yeah. That was Gaza, weren't it? Gaza when Gaza. he got the yellow card. Yeah. So he wouldn't have made the final. So this might make you feel a little bit old. I was born that year. I apologise. 1990. He was born. Yeah, yeah. And I was 10 years old. And that's that was the first World Cup that I ever. Like fell in love with, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you had like West Germany won it, like with like yeah. Lothar Mateus yeah, and yeah. all them. Like, what a World Cup that was! That's my, yeah. that was my favorite. Bremer one. was the winning penalty, I think, that knocked England out. Of, yes, they might have been the winning penalty in the actual final. No, can't remember. Yeah, they won one. <laughs> yeah, they won <laughs> one nil in the final. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we'd, have been, we'd, I joined that summer. Pierce, Stuart Pierce was missing because obviously he was on holiday for a right. little bit. Come in and. Forest, we played a lot of small sided games and round robins and mixed the first team and the reserve lads. And it was Stuart's first, one of the first training sessions back. And everybody was a bit, what do you say? Yeah. What do you say there? You say? Yeah. Unlucky, I'd, pal. I'd, 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 <laughs> I'd only just joined the club yeah. as well. So I'm thinking, well, Stuart, don't train, get practicing penalties. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. So Stuart's played on that pitch. And there was a lad, Scottish lad, brilliant lad, Brian Rice, left footer. Right, okay. Good player. So he was he was a senior pro as well. And as the teams are swapping over, you know, Reds, you're now playing Blues, swapping over. And somebody shouted, how did you go on to Stuart Pierce's team? And Brian Rice in the background went, we lost on penalties. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the whole training ground just went. <laughs> and Piercy like oh, took it he... for what it was. And everyone went, oh. Oh, you yeah, just saw the whole training ground relax and think, wow, well, here I we go. I think sometimes you need that, don't you? You need someone just to just yeah. break the ice with a yeah. bit of a joke and yeah. then... So it was like Stuart Pierce, like I say, Nigel Clough, there was Roy broke into the team, Brian Laws was there, Nigel Jemson. Right, wow. Mark, so what was Mark it that Cosler. stopped you? Stuart Pierce, Did the you? England captain, from getting into the first team. Was, right? was no, it? No, there was, there was, I played left back, so there was Stuart Pierce, there was a lad called Brett Williams, remember Brett Williams as no. well? Brett Williams was Stuart Pierce's understudy, but Stuart was never injured. Yeah. Stuart had a, 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 a um, he would never go out for a warm up, you know, he'd do his warm up all in the dressing room. Oh, would he? Yeah, yeah, he'd do his warm up, because I remember being in the 
squad as the thirteenth man or fourteenth man as a young lad, and you would you would do all the drinks and all the kit. Yeah. And everyone's gone out for a warm up. And Stuart didn't he do stuff in the dressing room? I was, I was, wow. And Brian was all right with that. Yeah, yeah. No, you players, you get on with it. Was he captain then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. what a player! I thought. He, oh, he was outstanding. Player. Yeah, outstanding. I'd like to do that, you know. That, but no, that, what, not yeah, go but, out for a walk? Yeah. No, I know, but was, he actually did a routine. Yeah. You'd be like that with the program, <laughs> well, well, wouldn't you? No, that's just because he's lazy. Well, well, it's just no. cold, isn't it, outside? <laughs> Stuart no. Pearce obviously did it for yeah, a, a yeah. better reason yeah, than that. Yeah, exactly. But no, he used to then run out to the Trent end behind one of the goals and that whole end would shout, psycho, psycho. Oh, yeah. And he just used to go before the game, arms aloft. you get tingles down the back. And it, you were a young lad, young yeah. pro watching it and going, Wow, what he's a one of them old school Psycho. players. When you look back, <laughs> they were just tough, weren't they? Oh, they were wow, tough players, well, brilliant. And that's when you could tackle. Legend. That's he, when he, you could tackle. Oh, proper tackle. Yeah, proper I remember tackle. him and remember Pat Vanden Howe. Yeah, yeah. Pat Vanden Howe was playing for Tottenham, and the two of them were just going like two steam trains, oh. and they hit in the middle of the pitch. I can see it now. It was and like both of them just got up. Well, in them, <laughs> probably in them, it'd be it, VAR now, and both would get well, sent yeah. off. But at the time, it was two like, red. but like in them days, his. His like attitude would be, do not show that I'm hurt. Do no, not no, show no that chance. like he's no got the chance. better of me. No. Whereas now, you get I get told to go down. Yeah, go down. <laughs> be in, clever. It's rubbish in it. Yeah, be, that's the be, yeah. be clever. Be clever. Buy a foul. Being soft. Buy a foul. Buy a foul. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you get touched in the box, go down. Yeah. And if, if he's on a yellow, if he touches yeah. you, scream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, I don't like doing it, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> so you just revealed your secrets <laughs> for the <laughs> weekend he's now, not, though. He's not going to move now, is he? <laughs> That's why he falls out with refs all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, so obviously then what a, I suppose, what a kind of introduction to professional football there. Brilliant. And that kind of then sets your standards, probably then not just in your playing career, but your managerial career and then you've got the move to to Rotherham yeah where... well I moved to Rotherham and the coaches there were Archie Gemmell and John John McGovern so they both they were joint managers right probably the first time they were joint Which managers under, since yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just thinking about it so they were they both played under Brian Clough for, so I moved into the same philosophy, same values, same way of playing, but just in a different league. But when I was at Forest, I'd had a back operation. I was out for, well, I don't know, 12 months, maybe a bit more. And that flared up again at uh, at Rotherham. Right. So at the end of that season, it was like, well, oh, listen, um, maybe not. So you were like... Oh, you knew your playing oh. career might be over yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. Right. So that was... That was tough. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. It was just well, like when you much. finish playing. It, it, yeah, yeah, I've been for it myself. Yeah, it's it's the hardest thing yeah. is finishing playing. And I've seen Especially that. when it's early. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I've managed players when they're coming to their end of the careers and that's hard for them to get yeah. the red round. I was just about to say then, like, yeah. my age now, I'm thinking, what shit? I'm what more you, worried about finishing 33. Oh, you've got another six years Yeah, but no? I'm still worried yeah. about that. Like, yeah, yeah. See, I was 24. How, how old would you have been? 25, yeah. Yeah, so 24, 25. Because th- you don't think you'll ever get back. So that's the thing. It's like, fuck, no. it's been taken away from yeah. you. Yeah. That, I think what, what's good now, though, is that the all, the profession has recognised that and there's a lot more support, isn't there, for players? Yeah. And there's a better way for them to transition from yeah. retiring or f- finishing through injury. Yeah. Back in that day, so what was that, 95? I just had my daughter, Georgia, she was two. You're on your own there, right? And it's like, right, where's everyone gone? Where's the dressing room? What do I do? (laughs) Yeah. And you didn't have really anybody that you could go to for sort of the support like these academies are providing now and the football clubs are providing. And all the education, you know, like the the FA provide, the coaching badges and stuff. So, like, was you... I suppose, like, was you torn between I really want to stay in football or I've got to get a proper job and and, and make a living for, well, for I wanted to do both, but like you say, I've got a young family, so uh, it was just, you just cracked on and just tried to find ways to bring in money. And so I was delivering parcels for a bit. Right. So I was delivering parcels for a bit. And then uh, Tony Laughlin, who I mentioned earlier, he just uh, retired as well. Um I think it was, uh, yeah, he, he he was at Forest and he'd retired as well. And he said, I'm going on a coaching course. Come with me. And I was like, he lived in Leicester. So I said, 
yeah, all right. So two of us went and did this at 25. And then when we were on the coaching course, bumped into some lads that were doing it as well. And they said, well, I run the development centre in Nottingham, which is where I lived. Yeah. Come and do that with me. Help me out a couple of nights a week. So that started me off right, okay. with the coaching. Yeah. So all of a sudden then it was uh, academies were just starting to come in from a centre. It used to be called School of Excellence. Yeah, Centre of Excellence, Excellence. Yeah. Excellence. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. it was the academies coming in and I got put in touch with... Um, John Peacock, who um, went was coaching from England's schoolboys, and he, right. he said, "Look, we're so what age group were you dealing with? Under twelves. Right, okay. I went in at under twelves with <laughs> yeah. a coach called Pat Lyons. Who, Pat, you, you what age are you? Uh, forty three. Yeah, Pat's forty three. He played for Burton. So right, he played okay. for Burton a lot in the non league under Nigel Clough. Yeah, enough. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant coach. I might have played he, against yeah, him. Yeah, you might have played against him. Brilliant coach and. Yeah, you know, he's just left Derby, but see, like, like this is good to hear because you'll have you'll have lads who are retiring from football yeah, or yeah. think about being a manager, and they see the likes of you and other managers, and they think, oh, he's 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 dropped into this job, or he's you know, <sighs> yeah. but it's not. He's no, years no, no. and years yeah, yeah. of yeah, yeah. coaching, starting at under well, twelves and working under twelves, and then I worked uh, for Nottingham City Council. In, on the summer camps. Yeah, yeah. And worked right in the inner city of Nottingham. Right. No, that's Rufus earning States. your stripes, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if anything, and I yeah. was like, remember back remember back in the day where I got 11-year-olds and like 12-year-olds and you're putting on this soccer, soccer camp thing for them. Rough lads, like, yeah. you know, backgrounds and do this football. Driving was... themselves into. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where do you nick that from, yeah. like, you know? Um, and, and like, they were just giving you so much lip and cheek and, and it was brilliant because you learn how to yeah. deal with them. Yeah. You know, you'd say, come on, man, and they'd be like, you know, yeah, you, 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 your girlfriend, I, I, and they're giving you a stick about your girlfriend or this. I'm like, you're 12 years of age, yeah. you should know about old. that. You know what I mean? what a girlfriend is. How do you, how do you deal with that? But, yeah. So, but yeah, I think you you're right. On, won't it? Great experiences. Yeah, of course. So then... I was part time at Ilkeston Town. At the same time, I went part time at Derby. Right. I went to do a college course, um, sports massage. Which, when I look back, I was like, no chance am I ever going to do that. But you were like, I've done that. I've done a what am I going to do? Course, yeah. Helps when you're single, it's, by the way. Yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It's just another feather in your cap, isn't it? <laughs> I did the gaff again in some of a rub as well. Oh, oh, no, no, no. He's, he's on the wrong track. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something to throw in on a night out. Right? Do you know these hands? <laughs> Gary you knows. You know, these, these, these are massage hands. These. Yeah, yeah. The so, I would never say that. I don't even talk to birds anyway. So. <laughs> no, so, no, they so, don't talk to you. That was it. And so I went to, and when I was at the college, I was enrolling on this course. Keith Alexander, remember Keith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was coming out, and so he was setting up a college scheme. He was one of the first people to set up, you know, like or uh, FC United have got a college scheme attached with, to the club. Yeah, attached with the, with the club. Yeah, everyone else now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Keith was the one of the first people in the country setting it up right. with this college, and he just said to me, "What are you doing?" I said, "I've had to retire. I'm coming to enrol." And he said, "Come and do this for me," and that got me. So I'd work far, four mornings a week doing that. And then at night, I'd go and do four nights for Derby's Academy. Right. And heck. so, and then on the Saturday, these lads would play for Ilkeston Reserves. Yeah. And I'd take that team with a, with a manager called Pete Barker. Right. And then uh, on a Sunday, I'd go and take the under 12. So I was out seven days a week coaching and, like you say, just trying to bring in money and what have yeah. you and make a living. But great experiences looking back. Ilkeston's a good club as well. You oh. played there, didn't you? No, I've never played that. No, you played you yeah, played yeah. at the ground and stuff. Great ground. Yeah. They've had a Keith they, taught me they, Pomo. They what? Pomo. What's that? You don't know what Pomo is? <laughs> Position of maximum opportunity. No. Back stick. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. He always used to join in with the kids. Yeah. Keith was six foot five. Yeah. And he just used back to put stick. his end hand up at the back stick and go, Pomo. <laughs> Position, Position of maximum of... opportunity. Oh, oh. That's a little bit like the corridor of uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pomo, he'd always shout. I always got Pomo front pulse as well. That's why I've not scored many. There you go. I always think if you get one at the weekend at Pomo, yeah, I'm going, right? Yeah, I'm going go back, back pulse. Yeah. Go back back. Yeah, get, yeah, get a blocker. Get yeah. someone to block her. We you played. Just, you just sit there, stand there, sorry, at the back post and just tap them in. We watched you miss it. for Salford 
against Ilkeston. You and Webb's up top. Me and G stop was banned, I think, right. for too many hours. And we said, we'll just nip into town for a meal deal. Ended up in pub. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Gaz. We, we, were, we couldn't play, we were in stands. So we said, right, we'll have one. Had two. I don't know a few more. We looked, it was five past three, the game was kicked off. We was one nil down. We was like, shit. I had to run back to the ground and we just stood behind the goal with a pint. We lost, didn't we? We lost. Yeah. The ph- photographer got me and in G-stop with a pint in our hand <laughs> and Gary Neville went mad. When rightly, you say, when you say, so, when you say G-stop, you mean Gary Stopforth? Yeah. yeah. How do you know Gaz? He played in my youth team at I, Blackburn. I said oh, that. You, we said he might. Yeah, I, I, I was like, no. He... Yeah. yeah. So when I when I left Derby, after, so I went full time at Derby. Yeah. I had two years, four years at Derby doing the youth team. And it was under 19s and under 17s then. And then I moved to uh, Blackburn, did the under 18s. And Stowie was... Um, he was captain, wasn't he? Stowie was in the, yeah, in I the said... youth team. He might have managed G Stop, and you said, No, G Stop's too old for that. Yeah, no. I thought he might have been, yeah. yeah no. I was trying to work out the years. Yeah. He was no, good enough, wasn't he? Oh, Stowe was great. Yeah. He Stowe used to go around, he, was, oh, yeah. he used to go around winding people up and booting them and training and everything, and then do the same on the Saturday. Yeah. But no, he's a, he's a good lad. He's, what's he doing now? <laughs> well, he has his own window cleaning round. He's had it for, he's had it for years. What does he do? Just bungalows? <laughs> it's tiny, yeah, it's, uh, he does have a yeah, he does have a ladder, um, but yeah, no, he's he's done a window cleaning round for ages, and then he's just knocked around like non-league, hasn't he? For him. yeah, I don't know if he's still playing. He was a was he a clipper all yeah, last time? I think so. Was he? Yeah, no, brilliant. I think people are like right, we need a centre mid. What's G stop doing? Let's just ring him. I didn't realise how good he were until he came to to Salford. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I was. A lot older now, 30. He's really good at the, the, what they say, the ugly side, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you know, like just the winning the ball back. And, and, yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. hard to find someone that likes it as yeah, much yeah. as yeah. likes that bit doing what, like he did. Yeah. So he just win it and give it. He was the, we mentioned it loads of time, he was the fittest kind of, like his diet and it was, it was crap. But he <laughs> I was thought the, you were going to go the other way because I was going to go, it no, wasn't when he no, was a youth lad. He's terrible. He's like his body and his fitness didn't match his lifestyle, if that makes sense. It was just unreal. Uh, when he was an apprentice at Blackburn, they lived on the training grounds yeah. in the accommodation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so when you were the youth coach, you were responsible in the house parents, Mike and Mary, they'd come down and go, get up here and have a look at this lad's bedroom. And I'm like, oh. And they don't in the bedroom and you see crisp packets and <laughs> bottles of pot and you're going, oh, no, Is that G-Stop's it. bedroom? That was everyone really. But oh, was it? G- <laughs> G- G-Stop was probably the most, though he's, yeah, but no, good lad. Who else was in that team then when you went to Blackburn? Oh, I'm just trying to think. Um, Any of them that, that came through and did really well? Joe Garner. Oh, right, okay, yeah. 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 Joe Garner, yeah. who's now at Carlisle. Yeah. He was a great lad, or still is a great lad, Joe Garner. Um, and then the, there was a lad called Keith Barker. Keith Barker drifted and went to Rochdale, all right? But he was an outstanding cricketer. And he plays. he's played a professional cricket from about, I don't know, 21, 22 years of age all the way through to now. All right. Still at, going. At Hampshire and Warwickshire and is a top, top bowler. Class. And you're like, wow. I'm sure Gaz mentioned it. Yeah, he might have done. So you Good had him lad. as a... Oh, you had him as a, I was as doing a, the wrong thing. I was trying to get him to control it. Well, I should have got him to just, try and yeah. throw it in the net. You should have put him in net. You coached him for two years and he ended up being a cricketer. cricketer yeah. It's a great <laughs> credential for me. Don't say much for I'm going to set up a one-to-one coaching business now <laughs> in cricket. Yeah. That was class. You were there for, you were there for a long time, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, 11 and a half years. And, and, he's, and yeah. did you, like while you were with the youth... Did you see a gradual kind of stepping stone where you thought, Do you know what, I can get into that professional first team environment as a manager no, or no, a coach? No, I never. So when it, they were in the Premiership and Blackburn were a really, you know, top, well established club, well run. Yeah. Um, you know, the the CEO at the time, Tom Finn, was spot on, had everybody boxed off. Brilliant, brilliant club. Um, and. Yeah, the pathway wasn't as... You know, now you look at the young coaches and they go from 
coaching under 12s to the next minute the the, the managing first team and then yeah. they're out of work by 37 that yeah. sort of thing yeah it wasn't like that then so you had to earn your it was like doing your apprenticeship again yeah. you know you had to yeah. do so many years of, you had to um, clean gary stopper's bedroom so you had to do your apprenticeship from that point of view so i was a youth team coach at blackburn for about six seven years and then um Sam Allardyce was the manager and he yeah. got sacked and Steve Keane took charge. The Venkies had just come in as owners. And um How did that change things? Because did they cut did they come in and, and invest straight away? Was was there a lot of money or is yeah, it... off memory they came in mid season, it was around I don't know, I'm gonna say about Christmas time, just before December, Christmas time. And um they bumped up Ian Brunskill, who was the reserve team coach, to help Steve Keane, first team. And they rang down and said, look, we, you come up and take the reserves. Right. So that's how I moved up from... Have you been to Blackburn's training ground? So they've got Lord, the two yeah, sides, yeah, yeah. one down the bottom, aren't they? Yeah. And one at the top. So I moved up the top to the first team and was in with the reserves. But um, that's how I got my move up to there. So, right. but I'd been down at the bottom for, like, say, six, seven years as youth team coach. Took you to India, didn't they? At one point. Um. Well, Jordan, Jordan, we were talking about. Jordan said, "I wonder, I wonder if they put a spread on for him. <laughs> spread, like, chicken like, nuggets, like, chicken, chicken wings, difference. and chicken. Nuggets. When I became manager, so. <laughs> I was. Did you go to India before you were manager, or, well, or as you were waiting to be announced, kind of thing? So, what well, we, they had the mad season. So Blackburn get relegated out of the Premiership, then yep. in the Championship. Shortly after, in the Championship, um, they um, Steve King left. Then they had a manager. Then they had. Then I was caretaker over. So Henningberg was in charge, and on the they played our game on Boxing Day, and. They'd lost and they'd been on a bit of a bad run. Well, imagine an office like this and there was me, assistant manager, first team coach, goalkeeping coach, uh, and the reserve team coach all in one office. And um, after this game, the Middlesbrough, they were in the next day because it was Crystal uh, Christmas period and you're playing yeah. so many games. Yeah. And um, they came in and that, that morning they all got sacked. And so they all got sacked, and there's just me left in the room on my <laughs> own. What do I do? Yeah. What, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. And am I next? Do you know what I mean? So I was waiting for the new manager and all that coming in. Nothing got said. And the fitness coach, uh, Mark Howard, came in and said, listen, we've got a small group that didn't play yesterday. Will you take them? So I went and took these lads and then coached the reserve lads in the afternoon. And when I finished coaching the reserve lads in the afternoon, I'm thinking, I must get told something now, right? Yeah. And we didn't. No, no. So everyone's just hanging around the train ground going, what's happening? I don't know. So everyone's waiting for this big new arrival of a new management team. And it was on the Friday, Friday morning, the next day, the Friday morning, I get pulled in by this, um, they had like a football consultant his name was Chevy Singh, and they pulled, he pulled me and he said, "Listen, we're we're bringing a new manager in, but we've just had one or two problems. You're going to have to take the team tomorrow." <laughs> I went, "Huh?" And he said, "Yeah, Barnsley away, Key Phil, right? Key Phil was manager." So I was like, "All oh, right." And and I've got so no... Barnsley have had Tom Kennedy in them in that side of them. John Stones. Yep, John Stones. Oh, John, John Stones, Stones was playing. He was TK 16, 17. Played. And yeah, Kennedy, Big Davis up front. Yeah. Was, uh, Craig, isn't it? Craig Davis. Yeah, yeah. With so, Ali Have Ali Mon, yeah. Well, he was a handful. Yeah, he yeah. was a big oh, lad. Horrible. He was an handful when he came in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so Good. we're going to Barnsley and I've got no goalie coach. I've got no assistant coach. It's just me. Wow. So I ring down and get Terry McPhillips up, the youth team coach, and we go to Barnsley and some top names like Nuno Gomez, Portuguese striker. Yeah. Immaculate, good-looking lad. Like, I, you know, I, I can see you looking at me in the same <laughs> reference. Yeah, I carry. looked at you and like, <laughs> you know, fans, yeah. So, you know, Danny Murphy um, was captain and uh, 
uh, you had uh, Colin Kaz in Richards. Yeah, Colin, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you had Kaz on here? Very no, but I played with Kaz on here. Very Did legend. you? I played with Colin um, Barry when he were coming through. And then, yeah, what a career he's had. I'm oh, saying, like, get him on here. He the went Fenerbahce, to Brazil. Galatasaray and... Celtic. He's had some top Mate, clubs. I know. You need I to get him thinking, on here. I'm sure he, I'm sure he played a, for like, Berry. So when he was like yeah. Turkish prince. Yeah. Well, he, he ended up, I don't know how the story goes, but I'm, sh- I'm I might be wrong here, but I'm sure it was like Coca-Cola or something like that did a prize and they were they were doing You're a right. giveaway, yeah, he and won it, it. it was like a hundred thousand pounds to the club. That's right. But the yeah. person who won it could then choose what player they signed, and I think Sheffield, Sheffield United, United won it. Yeah. And this kid went, "I want to sign Colin Callum Ristius," yeah. so they signed him. That's right. I'm sure that's how it yeah, goes. Yeah. Like so he that. went from Berry to Sheffield yeah. United, and that's how his career like ended up playing for Galatasaray. Yeah. And that's, he's, lo- he's, that's lucky. Isn't he's it? Well, not great, lucky because he's no. good, but. To get oh, what a great character, the, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great lad. Yeah. I mean, I remember also Cole on Caretaker, right? And uh, so it's like, I don't know, half past 10 tart training. And all of a sudden we're setting up on the pitch and you just hear this roar of a, uh, I don't know, Lamborghini or Porsche or <laughs> yeah. what, flying down that back straight <laughs> of that lane at yeah, Brock Hall. Yeah. yeah. And somebody went, that's Kaz. Okay. <laughs> we started training in two minutes. He was on the pitch in time. He was, was it? Oh, he was on the train. He was on the pitch. It's like it you was, this morning. You're yeah. in the building <laughs> in the on time. That's it. He, that was it. He was saying, I'm in the district. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the I'm in the borough of, of yeah, Blackburn. Blackburn. So I'm Burr. But yeah, so some big was names. Like Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> big names. Yeah, great. So how did that first game go? We won three one. Did you? Yeah, Jordan Did, Rhodes scored in the last minute at that away end. and um, Jordan Rhodes must have been good for you, that. Oh, he's brilliant. Because he was brilliant for Blackburn. Politest Blackburn, footballer. Yeah. In, Well-mannered, is it? He nice guy. He's he's still play is. like that, though, does he? No, he's ruthless in yeah. front of yeah. goal. He scored a lot I'm of watch, goals. I've been doing quite a bit of radio work for Radio Langs, so I've been doing Blackpool games. Right, okay. So I'm watching He's on loan into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah. just, just... Still good. Still brilliant. I was... How was John Stones in that first game? Yeah, he was 16, 17. I just remember him coming on and he was sub and he came on and I think, wow, you're a good size, you. And, but you could see he had so much growing to go into yeah. his body, but never did you think, wow, he's going and done what he's done. I mean, he's outstanding, isn't he? Now yeah. you watch him. And yeah. He's playing centre back and he's the furthest player forward for Man City, isn't he? He's yeah. brilliant the way they work it and what have you. But unfortunately, Illy got sacked that night after the game. Oh, did they? Yeah. So we won. They were on a bit of a bad run. Early got the sack and Flitty took over. Flitty was his assistant. Dave Flintcroft. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And he took over. Like, yeah. Um, no, so that was it. And then, so I'm thinking, that's me done. And then uh, I had four games in charge as a caretaker and then uh, went back to my reserve job. And so then who, who came in then? Michael Appleton came yeah. in. Yeah, Michael Appleton came in. So, I, right. So, like I've always wanted to know this as a manager. Like you, when you get put in charge of a, a caretaker, yeah, um, caretaker manager of a club. So you you know you're only in for a few games, yeah, yeah. and obviously you want to do well. And then the new manager gets appointed. Yeah. I would always worry for my job because if if I'm a manager coming in, I'm thinking yeah, yeah. this guy is yeah. hovering around because he wants to. If I do yeah. crap, he's gonna yeah, he's yeah. gonna want to take over from yeah, me. So yeah. did you worry about? Losing your job uh, when he came in? No, because I, I sort of like, when I was speaking to them, they, they sort of like said, look, you know, that first game, they said, look, we've got a new manager coming in. Yeah. Look after the game and then go back to your job. So that was me. That was that was me. Um, but then Michael uh, left very early on, 13 games, I yeah, think it, it was, because the club was club was mad that year. I think we had five managers that season. In the season. And I was caretaker twice so then I finished with the last 11 games to the end of the season we're trying to stay up then because otherwise the club would have gone did you have 11 games at the end yeah just oh, at the good. end yeah. yeah I think it was 11 games yeah so it was like panic on then because we were after the first game of my 11 we we drew at home to Blackpool and we dropped into the bottom three and you're thinking oh shit oh, <laughs> yeah but then on the other and then hand, that's when I flew to India so that was the first time I've, after that, after those games, I think I had two games over the Easter we played. Yeah, Easter Friday, Good Friday, 
and then we played Easter Monday. Yeah. And then the Venkis flew, flew you to out. India. Yeah. But I suppose if you look on the flip side, you're also thinking this is a great opportunity for me to come in, 11 games, keep them up and improve your CV well, as a manager. It, well, <clears> it was <throat> it was a case of just, look, listen, we've got to try and keep them up because I... Did you change been, anything? I, I was at Derby when Derby got relegated and people lost their jobs. Yeah. And then there was like... Uh, Refer deferrals of wages and that. And I was thinking, I've been through this before. Yeah, don't go for don't, that again. And you look at, and it's always the same in football clubs, isn't it? It's not the players. It's no. oh, there's three laundry lay good people. I oh, will lose one of those. It's the uh, you know. Yeah, well, like, it, it, how's you know, that going to make any difference? Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's she's got that like seven pound ninety five <laughs> yeah. that she's on is going to save the club she's millions. On, <laughs> she's on eighteen thousand a year. Eh? We need her out. Get See her what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, madness, it's, isn't yeah, it? It's crazy. But that's what happens, yeah. isn't it? So that was on my on my conscience a little bit of right. I, I don't want us to go down because I knew what yeah might happen. So. I didn't change anything. What we did was we just, we just, I just, we grabbed hold of a few of the senior players and just said, "Look, we got these eleven games," and there was a lot of noise. And was that going a private on. meeting with them, just to kind of have your yeah, just just your was, back the, as well? Yeah, there was. A, I was fortunate in the sense of there was some youth team players that have played for me that had gone into the first team. So Jason Lowe, Grant Hanley. Right, uh, yeah. Josh Morris, um, Jake Keane was in goal and he played for me um, at Derby. So I had a little core group that yeah. was sort of like saying, yeah, he's, he's all right, him. You know, he'll, yeah. he'll help us. Yeah. And I just threw it back to the player saying, listen, you don't want this on your CV, a relegation. Let's, yeah. let's just all have a go at what we can control, which is training. And just try to build relationships. So like Kaz, Colin Kaz and Richards, Got try to get him on side and just Danny Murphy was very good for me at the time. Yeah, yeah he, he helped a lot I as well. Danny and, Murphy was yeah. a black man. Totally yeah, cool. yeah, no, yeah. He was captain and and just sort of like involved them a little bit as well, you know, saying, yeah. right, how have you been defending set plays? How do you want to set play? Scott Scott Dan was there as well. And, yeah. you know, they were good lads. And Did just, you introduce the Paul Moore? Didn't, yeah, no, well, I didn't touch Jordan Rose. Don't t don't no. need to tell him anything about you scoring goals. You, you do. Yeah. So he has a he has a ritual where he's got to be last out of the dressing room. I, I used Jordan. to do that for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I yeah, I'm sure I read we it know, somewhere. With no like, top on. With no top on. <laughs> I used I always used to put my top on entering the field and I take you? it off before I come off the field. Right. Don't know why. Because there was a few you were modelling, were There used to be a lot of birds at the side, so that's, <laughs> that's that was a, why it's for that. It's the main reason. What robins, blackbirds, those <laughs> sides. Yeah. Well, there were no fittings. Imagine there. me doing it next year. Oh, like I wish you would have done it. Maybe a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you did you ever see any any weird rituals in the dressing room? No, only only, only Jordan's one. He used to be last out. Last out, and like he would, you know, he'd check. And it, it's check the showers and that. So I, I, someone, he walks out, someone comes out the uh, toilet. Oh, you bastard. Well, that was it, yeah. yeah. So you're like, but, but it's amazing how it rubs off because I then would help him check that there's no one's in the toilets because I'm thinking, I need my centre forward yeah. to be yeah, in the right it, yeah. frame of mind. And so I used to go in the showers and check the children. You're all right, George, no one in here, mate. Yeah, out you go. go, go and score goals. <laughs> Yeah, so that's... obviously you stayed up that year. Stayed up that year. And then they gave it me full time. Yeah. So... What was the what was the conversation like then when you went out to India? Oh, funny man. <laughs> funny. Yeah. Did they have a clue about football? So <laughs> what was their house? Sorry. What was their house like? Was it is it like a it's a yeah. palace in it? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. No, no. They um, I think they got they got thousands, uh, not thousands, hundreds of businesses. So, yeah, yeah. Like, um, but. The first time I flew out, um, so they gave me my ticket at the airport. Well, I get to go on the plane. And you just go, to, you turn right, don't you? Yeah. Economy. Economy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to turn right and the woman stops me. She went, no, sir, sorry. And I'm thinking, oh, no. Yeah. Where am I going then? Yeah. And she went, you're in there and points to business class. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, hello. Go. Yeah. So I had a little strut on, and then the next girl, next minute, so the girl there was there. Was you flying it. alone at this point? Yeah, I'm going on my own. Oh, so you can have a glass of champagne, so, can't you? So she brings the champagne. Yeah. I went, uh, how much is that? And she went, no, no, business class. I went, 
Oh, keep them yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like taking yeah. a photo <laughs> selfie. Look where I am. And yeah. to the missus and she's like, yeah, yeah. She's but, there with kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. So, um, so we get there, like, and uh, it's brilliant. Because, you know, when you get off the plane, normally there's a lad with your name on, isn't there? Um, Picking you As you up. get through. Yeah, yeah, transport. So the lad's there. But literally, as I've got off the plane, I'm thinking, oh, hello, this is... Walk on the runway? Uh, just as you come off, you know, right, when okay. you get off on in the that... Runway. <laughs> no, but literally. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but instead of waving down, I've got a big sign up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they take me, take me through, and there's a massive queue. And now you get to the front of the queue and got now hundreds of people like looking as if to say, who's this? Who's this? Yeah. And uh, yeah, get get chauffeured up to to go and meet them. Like, but all of a sudden it was like, wow, my world's changed, hasn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, I thought I was getting refused for economy and I was getting put under with the bags or with whatever. The, yeah, the <laughs> and then you sat in business class, but they looked after you properly. And then, no, they were just great. They were really good. India's. I learned a lot because you have to learn about the Indian culture as yeah. well and how, you know, yeah. you treat them and what you can say and how how they like to interact. They love face-to-face, -face, you yeah. know, as much as they can. So, And yeah, what was the conversation good. like? It was just you have just to stay that. up. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, we'd stayed. Yeah, we want to stay up. We want to stay in the division. So we'd done that. And then they flew me back over again at the the end of the season with the managing director and uh, the club secretary and just sort of like outlaid the plans and they'd spent, like you say, I'd, I don't know how much football knowledge they had at the beginning when they bought the football club. Yeah. But then I just sort of like said, well, this is what I want to do. I want to try and bring uh, a return of in, on your investments. So get good, hungry young lads, Tom Kearney, Corey Evans, Ben Marshall, um, we touched on Ben Marshall before. Yeah. Will, who's not here, absolutely loves him. Like every podcast we do is like, ask him about Ben Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> yeah. like... Brilliant, brilliant lads. So we bought young, hungry lads in. Yeah. And, you know, worked with them, adding them to, like, say, Grant Hanley, J Jason Lowe, um, and had some good seniors as well and said, look, we want to do it this way and you get a return on your investment. And she was happy with it, Madame. And, um, and did you have a chance to negotiate your own deal then? Or did you have someone doing that for you? Or was it no, kind of, uh, it, it or did was they just, just present it to you? Yeah, it was just presented me and I went like that. Went, Get what you wow. get. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. and she went, oh, do you want some more? I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, it was it was, it was just, it, there you really go. I would have been a reserve team coach yeah. on yeah. 60, 65,000 pounds or something yeah. like that. To then all of a sudden you get, the managers and it was the opportunity that and that was probably the second time when I was caretaker was like oh yeah oh, I want to have a go at this yeah. now yeah, yeah. and, and, you, and you, you had three years there didn't you I had two two and a half yeah two and a half years we and like say some of the things that you learn on your coaching badge don't prepare you for what actually happens in real life in terms of dealing with players we had a transfer embargo so you know all this now Everton getting yeah. docked and all that. We had it back in 2013-14 season. So back then we got placed under a transfer embargo. So you couldn't sign anyone for money. You could only sign three transfers and they put a cap on your salary and what, of the wages that you could pay right. people. So you were like, wow. It's a bit of a killer that, isn't it? What yeah. did you do then? Is that when you've got to look to the youth? Yeah, well, like I say, we had a good academy and uh, we had a good core group. And fortunately, we bought, like I say, Tom Kearney in and uh, Marshy and Corey Evans in and, and um, we had Rudy Gestead and Jordan Rhodes up front. Right. And then we went and got, like I say, I think I spent probably about three million quid on seven players at the time. Yeah. So <laughs> you're not doing that anywhere you're not doing near that, that now. No are you? chance. No. And, the return on the investment, Shane Duffy. We bought, we bought oh, wow. Duffy. Yeah, so yeah. We bought Shane Duffy as well, and then obviously they sold Duffy for millions. Sold Grant Hanley for millions. Tom Kearney where, for millions. Where did Where did Duffy go from there? Uh, Brighton. So I think Grant Hanley went to yeah. Newcastle, and Duffy went to Brighton. Right. Yeah. Um, but the 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 environment was good in the whole training ground. The whole staff. Yeah. So I had real good staff. Dave Fever. Uh, was the physio that was with 
for Alex Ferguson when they won the treble. Right. So he was the head of medical, the physio, and he's top bloke. Um, Craig Short was my assistant with Terry McPhillips, those two, and Tony Grant uh, was the first team coach. And we, the environment within there was people enjoyed coming to work and we had some yeah. good characters, like I say, um, that we just had real good times, like, you know. People like Luke Varney, who was he was on the you know, he couldn't get in because yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was he was he was brilliant, brilliant pro and brilliant entertainment. When did you when did you know it was coming to an end? Was it a uh, when results, the managing or? director rang me and said, uh, "Listen, I'm coming down to the training ground." I think, oh Shit. no, <laughs> here we go. And um, no, we'd been playing well, and I think we we were something like we might have been three or four games unbeaten, but drawn them, right? Or certainly the last three games we we'd drawn them. And anyway, he just came in and he said, "Look, listen, sorry, but there you go." Because that been your, your first, first one. Oh, it hurts, mate. Was it? Oh, it's a real kick in the you yeah. know what. Three years is all right, oh. though, isn't it? But I'd, I've been there 11 and a half years yeah. as well at the club. Well, that's the thing. It's not like you're being sacked and you can no. go back down to the yeah, U or exactly. you're out of the club, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. It, oh, it hurts. Yeah. And it, 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 was, um, it was painful, that was. Yeah, that was packing your stuff in your car. It was like driving home and driving away. And you're going, oh. And it what? is. Oh, not far off. Because you had to yeah. ring people. Yeah. And I'm going, going to get in the sack. Like, you know? <laughs> How bad's that feeling? Poor, that? But oh, do you know what? Yeah. It's really interesting as a manager, the, the manager community then, because... Um, when everybody reach out Everybody rings and reaches out. Right. But there's two, two people that I always mention, um, Mick McCarthy and Steve Bruce. Okay. Because what happens is everybody... <laughs> two very big names. <laughs> everybody Old rings you that first... Yeah week you know yeah three weeks down the line you're looking at your phone as if to say is it still working <laughs> yeah. you know and uh i always remember my phone rang and i picked it up like that went, hello and mick mccarthy went, bloody hell lad <laughs> chill out <laughs> yeah he says your phone's not ringing is it i went no how do you know he says ah that's and he'd waited that time to ring me because he knew. Because we'd thought about it. He cool. knew that yeah. everybody would be ringing at the beginning and three weeks down the line. Yeah. And he said, look, listen, this is what you've got to do. You've got to go and uh, get out and start watching games and doing all that and get yourself on TV if you yeah. can. Or He says, but in your case, you've got a face for radio. So get on the radio. <laughs> so face for me. That, uh, that's coming from him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't trouble. say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> And then Steve Bruce did the same. But right. a couple of days later, he rang. And he, and he said, shows a little bit of class, that, doesn't brilliant. he? Brilliant. Top, yeah. top. And, you know, I saw, he still speak to Steve Bruce every now and again when I took players off him or I saw him in a restaurant in Manchester last year and he was brilliant again. And like you say, just, yeah. they understood it. And as a young manager back then, I would have been, what, 42, 43? Yeah. And, um, yeah, he just... So that's great. Just that. good. And it's something I've tried to do myself a little bit with people, you know? Yeah. Three or four weeks later, just ring them a ring and say, phone stop ringing. And they, they're they the same as me yeah. then. Like, yeah, how do you know? <laughs> yeah. I've been through it, yeah. But then after that, they say you're a proper manager once you've been sacked for the yeah. first time. Well, it's all part of being a manager nowadays, isn't it? So, I think it's harder now. It's I really do. You, you just don't get the time. It's like it's Jordan just... touched on before three years. At Blackburn now, like it's a long time at a club. Yeah, it's, it's a good it's, stint it's, in your first match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how did you how did you get your name out then to to end up at Blackpool? Um, Blackpool. So uh, Blackpool's a, a strange one because I'd missed out on a couple of jobs leading up to it that week, and I got a phone call <laughs> off Richie Kyle, who's right. now Rob Edwards' assistant at Luton. Luton right. So they're doing ever so well. I think they've got a ch right chance of staying up. Neat. Luton, they do. And Richie had worked in the academy with me and he, he became assistant manager at Blackpool <laughs> under Neil McDonald. But Blackpool had suffered two back to back relegations yeah. Yeah. and were in League Two. And the boy, the fans were staging a boycott. And he, he rang me and said, Listen, I need your help. Do you know about this manager? And he asked me about a manager. And I said, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's <I> said, rubbish. <laughs> 
I bet they did. <laughs> I didn't at the time. I said, oh, right, is he, is he going to be a point? He said, oh, he's got an interview. Yeah. And he, he flippantly just said, do you fancy it? And I went, um, I don't know. I said, wow. I said, I just missed out on a couple yeah. last week. I said, um, and listen, you know, you were in the championship. You want to try and stay championship league one. It's like being a player, isn't it? You want to play yeah. as high as you can. So I was, so I was like, oh, league two and the club had been in a bit back to back. So anyway, he said, um, I'll, I'll tell the chairman. So he told the chairman, Carl Oyston, and the next day, I got a phone call. He says, look, come and meet us. So I went up and thought, well, and I still believe this to the day. You know, when somebody rings you, you should always go and speak to them, no matter if, you know, if you think, it's just like a player, isn't it? I yeah. don't want to go and play for him, but if you go and have a chat with him, you never know, do you? And no. Especially when they say to you, look, it's X amount of weight. Yeah. Um, and he just... We had a chat. He said, look, listen, we've made some mistakes uh, because they've been back to back. He said, but would you be able to handle uh, the chaos that was surrounded by the club? I said, well... That walkout <laughs> was mad, wasn't it? I, I, I'd, I've had three years as manager at yeah. Blackburn when the fans weren't and best pleased with and, the, and all that. I said, so, yeah, I would. And then, you know, when you sat there and you think, He's going to offer me the job here. Yeah. And I haven't told my missus I've gone out to speak to Blackpool yet. <laughs> and he did. He offered me the job. And I went, right, uh, let me make some phone calls. And Oh, you him. didn't just say, yeah? No, I said, well, yeah, let me, terms and conditions, but let me just go and tell my missus that um, I've not gone out to do the shopping at Asda. Yeah. I've gone, <laughs> yeah. gone to get a job. And, uh, and just said, right. Uh, and we took it. And there was... It was brilliant because... Um, and you had a great season. Yeah, well, I took the job and then the next day I said, right, Richie, let's go to the ground. And I hadn't had time really to do my own work yeah, yeah. on the club other than the walkouts. <laughs> what what players have we got? Tennis, yeah. <laughs> tennis sports. So we walked into the manager's office. I said, Richie, what? And he, Richie's going on holiday that afternoon. I says, what players have we got? He says, we've got 12. I says, right, okay, 12. What staff have we got? He went, None. He sacked them all. Oh, wow. And I was like, what? He said, so there was me, Richie, Phil Horner was the physio, and a lad called Adam Whiteside, who was the analyst, great analyst. Yeah. And that was it. And so I said, well, where's the goalie coach? He says, he sacked him. I says, where's the kit man? He says, no, we haven't got one. Players wash their own kit. And he said, I said, well, where's the uh, fitness coach? He says, no, I've not got one. No fitness so, coach. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And so for the first couple of days I'm trying to convince Carl I need a I need few, more staff. few more members of staff no, yeah. uh, and he, he said he said well they, they weren't very good for us last year we didn't need them so we got relegated two years running so we had a bit of banter and he said look yeah all right you can so we got that guy and got the staff guy and we, like I say there was only seven of us and I, I always joke when I was at Blackburn all the support staff you know in the championship masseurs chefs cook um the analysts, the, the the scouts and everything. You couldn't fit them all on the team bus. Yeah. Because there's that many. Yeah. When I went to Blackpool, I could fit them all in my car. Because <laughs> that was it. It was yeah. just that was seven of us, I think there was five that, of us. That is starting from from literally a clean sheet in yeah. there. Yeah. Well, clean slate. We, well, we signed some we signed some good players. There's some good players already there. Bright Asari Samuel, who now plays for Fernabeci. Yeah. So Brad Potts was there. So did you have chance then to to go through a window? And, I had and, two and windows. At, uh, yeah, we had two windows. Right, so, so I had that was... summer. Yep. And then they had January. Right. Okay. And then we got to we got into the playoffs and won at Wembley. Who was that against? Exeter. Exeter. That's the one. But the Blackpool fans had boycotted all the home games, and so there was only probably about a thousand diehard Blackpool fans that came. So the away end did have more fans than your own fans yeah. every home game. How was that? Was that that's tough? That tough, Just weird. yeah. So that far stand was empty. There was they a hated spring clean... the Oysters, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They yeah, hate yeah, the yeah. Blackpool fans. Yeah, hated them. Yeah. So, like the away end was, you know, more fans. And, and what? But but that trip to Wembley because it's a way. It's not at home, is it? No. That must have been. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, did they yeah. all turn up for that one? Yeah. No, 
Did they not? No, fair play to them. They stuck yeah. by the guns and yeah. went... Did you even go to Wembley? No, we had 5,000 fans at Wembley. I think the, the attendance was something like 17,000 fans. 12,000 Exeter 12, fans. 12,000 Exeter fans. And yet, every other playoff game, because Blackpool's the most um, successful club in the playoffs. Right, okay. So, every other Wembley visit... They've packed that out, oh, yeah. like 40,000. I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know they boycotted that yeah, as well. The, yeah, fair play to them. You know when you say, I'm sticking to my values yeah. and my principles? Yeah, if they'd have all turned up, it's a bit of a... Yeah, but that for us, that was that was hard because... Yeah. I mean, you don't want, get me wrong. You want that home we, support, we, we, don't yeah. you? Yeah, we wouldn't... Well, more the Wembley thing, I thought, for yeah. the players, you know? Yeah. So we celebrated with 5,000 in this little corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you remember, do you remember who scored? Yeah, yeah. Potsy scored in the first minute. And then, oh, what a start as yeah, a manager! First minute, Wembley, it was like wow. First minute, and then um, we lost the captain Tom Aldred. He came off injured, and we changed from a five, uh, and I went to a four, um, and then we had to play Mark Cullen, who was a striker playing yeah, yeah. in. The, so we played five three two and played him up front with Kyle Vassell. So right. Bamber Bridge, yeah, Kyle yeah, Vassell. he is, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got him he, set tomorrow. Have tomorrow, you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Go and say hello to him. Yeah, he's top man. He's a funny lad. He is. And we had to play him just off uh, and play him in midfield. And he looked at me as if to say, oh dear. I yeah. can't believe you've That's a lot of running. Finally, yeah. Coles in sentiment. And he, he scores the winner. And then I said to him at half time, I said, look, just run for as long as you can. And when you've blown up, Take you off. Take, I'll take you off. Yeah. Just let me know when you're done. He scores his goal and he's gone, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after, he was like, I'm done. He wanted that standing yeah, evasion, didn't he, for the yeah. 5,000. Well, I was going to say, but he forgot there was only 5,000. <laughs> so so oh, that was what good. A win. How did you celebrate that then? Oh, we had a good night. Did you? In yeah. London? In, yeah. Did you stay to be over? fair to Carl Oyston, he, he put, he, we'd gone down two nights before. Yeah. And, um, we then uh, we stayed at the Hilton at Watford, and um, we all went back there, and yeah, we had a good night. I'd rather go Blackpool, me than London. We had a class. No, we just stayed in the. We just, just yeah. there was a DJ on, so we got DJ yeah. on, and f lads all went back, and it was funny because it was all supposed to be for the lads, like, and on. So as you leave Wembley on the bus, the lads are buzzing, and there's the lads are having some beers and what have you. And, and then one of them come down the bus, Gaffer, um, is it all right if my family come back to the hotel for the party? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Next one come down. <laughs> is it all right if my yeah, yeah, yeah. You walked into this room, you're like, oh dear, that probably- <laughs> That's a lot of family. That's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, free uh, drinks there, isn't so, it? So, yeah. yeah. That bar's getting- That, that free that bar might go a bit quicker. <laughs> like. That's who that 5,000 fans were. <laughs> Just a yeah. player's family. So yeah, it was, a, it was a good night. And then obviously the team then all got back on the bus that day yeah. and- so what, back like, up. what made you, because you didn't get sacked from Blackpool? No, we got promoted. Resigned. I had a year and we did ever so well the second year. We yeah. um, we finished 12th, but our budget was well, bottom four, bottom five. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, we, we had some real good signings. We signed Sean Longstaff on loan. Yep. Oh, he was player. magnificent. Yeah. He scored nine goals. He could shoot from anywhere. and um, Newcastle lad. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... We had him. And we had a lad called Viv Solomon Otterbar from Birmingham on loan. He was a young kid, young young winger. I think he's playing in playing in the Ukraine now. Um, and then we had some good sprinklings of some senior ones: Jimmy Ryan, uh, I, Jimmy I, I, Ryan, midfielder, and Jay Spearing. Yeah, yeah. So we had Jay. He's been well. on. He's been on. He won't remember him. Yeah, Jay Spearing. So half, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he we, was at Blackpool we had a good... for a long time, weren't he? Uh, he little midfielder, yeah, yeah little yeah. midfielder. Yeah, they're not going to Bolton. No, he came from Bolton. He came to... from Bolton so to I, Blackpool. as it goes, I signed him for Blackburn on loan, and then he went to Bolton, and then they, he left, and then he was out of work, and he rang me up and said, "Can I come train?" I went, "Yeah, of course you can." And he just joined in at Blackpool. And he Did went, you start off at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And he said, "Oh, I like it here. Can we try and do a deal?" I went, <laughs> Jay, we can't afford you, mate. And he went, no, I just want a bit of cash to play. And it was like, wow, Fair play. you just wanted to play. And then I remember going, yeah, there's your kit. He says, <laughs> take right. it home and wash it. <laughs> take it home and wash it. He went, yeah, good one. Because he'd had me at Blackburn yeah. where there's the laundry and everything. I went, 
oh, Jay, seriously, mate? <laughs> <laughs> We've all got to wash our own kit. And you're like, wow. Wow. But you know what? It, it, it bonds people together, yeah, though, does, doesn't it, it? When you're old. The yeah. Spirit and well, what Lads are coming in saying, I forgot my top. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can I borrow a t shirt? <laughs> my top's pink. <laughs> <laughs> I've dyed it pink by accident. Yeah. So it was great, like, you know? Yeah. But like I say, like, what, once you're all in the trenches, it, it, it does bind you together. So I'm obviously, like, I'm just conscious of time. And we've got, like, your spells at Bradford and Salford, two. Two big clubs where the expectations yeah. are massive. Yeah. How was obviously going to Bradford, massive club, massive stadium yeah. for that league. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fans are still turning up. Yeah. Was was the expectation the hardest thing to deal with? Yeah, it is. It is for that club. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I went in because I think a lot of managers struggle. Because of, like I say, because of expectation, yeah. and if you re- and if you look at the side, yeah, it sometimes doesn't match. It, it's it's weird. It really is. I think, like you say, because they've been in the Premier League, yeah, their expectation is, you know, we want yeah. to get back there, and you know, reality, like you say, doesn't always work like that, no. does it? And so, and I think um, that's why they go through a lot of managers yeah. because, well, because of that. Yeah, we 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 had a we had to clear out the summer because they got relegated. And we cleared it out. We brought some good players in. Is that from League One down from to League, League One Two? From League One to League yep. Two, and we'd been in the playoffs all year, and then we dropped out of the playoffs. And as soon as we dropped out of the playoffs, they sacked me. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even <laughs> give you a chance a to get back in. Made me laugh. The, he said, "Bless him, the CEO." He said, "Yeah, um, yeah, we've lost three three games of the last seven. And I was like, "Yeah." I says, actually, we've lost three of the la- in the last 14. And he went, are we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, but they'd made the no, lines up. Yeah. And listen, the fans were wanting Stuart McCall back. Because Stuart, right. Stuart, again, it was another club where the owners and the fans were fighting. Stuart McCall had left. Stuart McCall's out of work then. Yeah. And this owner had left. And so there was a bit of stability back to the club. And the fans wanted Stuart back. And, uh, and he's a fan's favourite from a yeah, player yeah. and, and stuff so, like that. And so, you know, like I say, we were a point outside the playoffs when they sacked me, so that one was. That's a bit. It's just. Bit, it's all right. That's football, though, isn't it? You some like I say you just get I on. I think with as it. a manager yeah. and as a player nowadays, you've got to have a really yeah, thick skin. Exactly. You've got to think about yeah. yourself as yeah. well. So, and then you get. So I went back to Derby. Then I was, I was yeah. doing the under twenty threes with. You know the lad said that that under twelves, uh, Pat Lyons. He yeah. was now the under twenty three coach, <laughs> and I went that, to assist him. Surely you find that hard though, from going from senior football manager to then back to the youth system. I think it would have been hard if I didn't know the people that were there. So right. it was an easy transition. Right. You know, it was like you two relationship. Was Rooney like, the manager then? No, uh, the player. No, he or did he? Or did he just arrive? Oh, so it, I think he might been, have just arrived. Yeah, it would have been yeah, around. But if you're arrived, going from the manager player. of a prem team, yeah. And then you go into Derby under twenty three's assistant. Yeah, that's weird to get your head round. Sure, no, no, it wasn't. I know what you're saying, but because I knew Pat, I've known Pat all my life. Well, majority of my life, it was easy just going in and yeah, watching him. And and you know what? It's a bit it easier, was. Yeah. I was still involved in football. I yeah, was helping. Yeah. I was able to ask, you know, pass on some, hopefully, yeah, some yeah. advice to the yeah. young players. But it was great as well because I I probably needed it because it was a like. I was still involved in the game, but I Chill. didn't have to pick a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. have to upset players. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, it's tough. I had a plagiar. Yeah, but at Go the pop, same pop, pop. time, yeah, 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 <laughs> and it was. But there was no pressure. Yeah, but you're still involved in the game, and I didn't mind that. And I probably needed it at that time of, of, of my life, if you like. Yeah. And then I had um, what six, seven months doing that, and then I got a strange phone call from Salford. Was it was it Gary who phoned you? Uh, no, Chris, Chris Casper. All oh, right, okay. So Chris was yeah, yeah, was the sporting, sporting director, director then, wasn't he? And yeah. uh, well, I got a call, and they said, "Look, you know, they're making a change with the manager." And I was who, like, "Who was the manager in place at the uh, time?" Richie, Richie Wellens. Richie yeah. Wellens, yeah, okay. So I'm saying to my missus, oh, "I'm out for a walk with my missus." I said, "I'll take this because it's about." It'll be asking me about a player, and I'm walking on the phone like and saying, "Right, yeah." <laughs> so <laughs> Richie's. Gone, yeah, right, okay. Um, well, I'm still, I'm still at Derby though, and he said, 
yeah, uh, Wayne and Gary have spoke. So I was like, all right. And they've agreed it, that you can come. And... I'm like, no one spoke to me, like, you know? Yeah. And so... Another good opportunity, though, to Yeah, you. yeah. So I, I went on loan, like you say. Yeah. And I said, look, I think, again, it was 10 games, 11 games. And I just said, look, I need some assurances I can go back to Derby here. And so we got it all sorted. Derby were really good. Salford were really good. So and I'd took him for the last 11 games. I never, I never heard that a gaffer could go on loan. <laughs> no, I didn't. I think I I'm the only one. Was a po- yeah. Well, yeah, I'm I, the only one. I don't know of anybody, quiz, anybody else. Quiz question. So, yeah. There's only Gary Neville that could sort that out, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. How did you find working with them guys? Brilliant. Yeah. I, look, listen, my, at the time, it, it's, it, it was a different dynamic now to what it is, then to what it is now. So, um, Gary was the line manager. Gary yeah. ran it yeah. as I saw it. Um, then there was, um, I spoke to Paul Scholes a couple of times. Uh, yeah. He'd come down a couple of times to the training ground. Yeah. Karen uh, and Tammy. Spoke. <laughs> and you had Karen and Tammy. Karen. 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 Tammy comes Karen. with her. You've got Brilliant. to say Karen and Tammy. Yeah. Karen and Tammy. Tammy, yeah. <laughs> there. Um, but no, I really enjoyed it there. The right. committee, Babs, you know. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Babs every Saturday in my office would come in with a tray of biscuits and we're like, <laughs> Babs, <laughs> we're trying to lose some weight, love, and she's just like, boom. Yeah. The old boys on the committee as well. Brilliant. Class, Top they? draw, weren't they? Yeah, you know? brilliant. Just really good people, aren't they? Yeah, and, they are. uh, yeah. It was, like you say, you know when you're at certain clubs, you can feel the 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 spirit and the bond, can't you? Yeah. And I thought that with, with Salford, with the... Um, with the committee lads, but like I say, with Gary as, as well. And did you, did you, because you just missed out on the playoffs yeah, didn't you, that year? Did yeah, you last think, game. Yeah, did you think if you'd have made the playoffs, you might have had the chance of staying on as manager, or did you always know that they had somebody else? No, I thought, because you was yeah, on I thought, yeah, the, you know, it was just to, uh, to the end of the season, like, right. and then I think, when is it? Just as the season finished, they said, look, we're going to have a meeting. Would you be interested? And I was like, wow. Well, when I was going to Derby, I live in Warrington. So to go to Derby yeah. is too... Well, it, when I was there, it was COVID. So I was driving an hour and a half. It was no right. problem. There's nothing on the road. Yeah. So you can do an hour and a half. Then COVID was coming up and it was going to be like, I don't know, two and a half hours. Whereas Salford's 15 minutes. So I was like, yeah, that would yeah. be handy, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So... <laughs> Luckily, they said, look, listen, have a go. And yeah, had a year there. Disappointed with the way it ended. We just missed out on the playoffs with probably two games to go. Yeah. Um, And then uh, got a phone call. Can you come to Gary's office in Manchester? You knew what we're going to do. Hotel football, was it? uh, No, No, he's he's got his office. Yeah. And just said, look, we want to go in a different direction. So that was disappointing because we're a good core group of lads there and yeah. enjoy, I enjoyed it, like I was saying. And I think that's been the biggest part of Salford's kind of not success, if you will, by the, the turnover of managers. I think, yeah. I think sometimes they've wanted achievements too quickly and not actually Yeah, then. possibly. And, I, and I, I think they'll probably step back and say, do you know what? We should have given that person an extra year because they had this going. Yeah. But, yeah. but well, it's, it's the same, wasn't it? Greza was, you know, they were, they were, when they got rid of Greza the, and then Gary later on said, I shouldn't have got Graham rid of him. Alexander. Yeah, yeah, Graham yeah, Alexander. Yeah. That's right, yeah. You know, so... Um, yeah. But it's It goes back to them, what we're it? saying, stability. Yeah. It, sooner or later, all these owners, in my opinion, have got to realise, look, if we want to be successful, it might actually take longer than... Yeah. Six, seven months yeah. of a season, you know? Yeah. And if we build something, yeah. common word now is culture, isn't it? Yeah. Building a culture. Building a culture. Yeah. Well, how do you build a culture in six, seven months? Can't do it, no. You know, you're going to have to give somebody two years, three years to yeah. try and bring it all in. And, and same with, you You know, in your industry now with the windows, give a manager one window. Can't it's hard, it. isn't it? Yeah. It's hard. And I, I think the, you know. Especially if it's a January window, because it's, it's. Yeah, be no, that's no, 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 it's tough, isn't yeah. it? So, but yeah. So, what's the plan now? Are you itching to Well, get I went back up in? to Scotland you went straight Dundee, up didn't there. You? Yeah. So, I went straight up to Scotland three weeks later. I had a wonderful time up there. Loved living up there. Um, what was but, the difference between Scottish football and English football? Uh, there's was quite it, a bit. The, there's quite a bit. So, there's no. They're just. 
the EPPP and the academies down here have been further established than what they are up there. So there's that. That is one. Um, the passion of the fans well, up that, there. Yeah, wow. That was one of my questions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because they you've are. got you've got Dundee United and Dundee, aren't you? In the 250 yards. Yeah. Maybe across the road. What from the from, from the, the ground? ground. Yeah. yeah. Club to club. <laughs> club to club on the same road. No, club a bit more. Club. 500 yards. Yeah. Five hundred yards, brilliant. So it's a weird dynamic, isn't it? Yeah. Such it's like a... going to Ashton Town when you're at Ashton Athletic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that story? <laughs> if you go to the wrong ground, or not, listen, ever. No. Listen to this. <laughs> I've already told it. Yeah, but basically, it's I turned up at the wrong ground. So basically, he got told to come for to come and play for this team, Ashton United, and he sat in the dressing room at Ashton Town. And he's yeah, and he sat there, and all, and all the lads are looking at him, and he's thinking. Why are they all looking at me? Manager comes <laughs> in, he thinks, it's not the manager I've spoke to. The manager's... Did right? you play for him? <laughs> no, he, he, he all right. He, what are you doing here? He's literally, I've come, I've come to play for Ashton Town. He's like, oh... The wrong team. Wrong this, team. This is, yeah, this is wrong team. You're, it's fucking... So you did not try and sign you for that game. game. <laughs> <laughs> they won't Imagine back, that. Though. Right, lads. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, I was wrong. Yeah. So yeah, like how, how was that? How was that as a yeah. dynamic? You loved it up yeah, there. Yeah, I loved it up there. The, the, like I say, so passionate the people, you know, uh the the city of Dundee. You were either Dundee or Dundee yeah. United. And they referred were they to, in the championship then? Uh Dundee were in, Dundee United were in the Prem and yeah. Dundee were in the championship. Yeah. We won the league on the last day of the season. That's so right. um we played Queen's Park and whoever won the game won the league so it was oh, fantastic oh wow yeah and it was free all at half time <laughs> no way was it free all at keep half it, time keep it steady <laughs> first <it> yeah. <laughs> and I, I can remember because we're like we went one nil up then it was uh dead quick and you think oh yeah that'll sell us down brilliant that'll kill them but you go in at half time it's free all and there's carnage going off with the players and you're going whoa 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 come on yeah. just calm down nil nil yeah. nil nil lads. calm down and uh yeah and then uh what did it end up Five three, we won. We won five what three. What a game! Oh, it was brilliant. Ball, yeah. To get into the Scottish to prem. get into the Scottish prem, we had a great night that night back at the ground, and uh, yeah, what, the Scottish prem. Yeah. What level would yeah, you compare it's hard. It to in England? Yeah, it's hard because you've got Celtic Rangers, which yeah, they're... just we we actually played Rangers in the cup, and I'm thinking, oh no, we got we were the champs, like in the FA, not the. The equivalent to the Carabao Cup. Yeah. And we were playing and I was thinking, oh dear me. The Ibrox, you know? And it was like um but we we managed to to lose just one nil, so we were happy that uh but you've got Rangers and Celtic like I say, then you've got another like tier and then the bottom tier is yeah strange because Celtic and Rangers play in the Champions League. So yeah. it's True. it's hard to say, oh it's the equivalent to Who's like the tier under it is that like you've got Aberdeen Hearts uh, Hibs yeah and then Dundee United but Dundee United had a bad year last year so they got relegated yeah. as Dundee got promoted so oh. the city was again split and buzzing yeah can you can you can you mention why you left yeah yeah no um because you've just been announced as championship, championship manager, of the, manager year, of the year at 20 to 10 yeah <laughs> and then at 10 o'clock Managing director walked in and just said, "Look, listen, we're going to go in a different direction." There's me and my assistant Billy Bard's letters and uh, after promotion. Yeah, yeah, and away you go. It's the weirdest so it like, game in the world. Wow! Like, what? So <laughs> got back in the car, drove again, went. Uh, so just wait. So so you've ju you've just you've got, got your award promoted. Yeah, and you've you've not even started the next season. I was on the phones. Between 20 to 10, 10 o'clock, I was on the phone to some player in England going, do you fancy coming up to Scotland? And he was Come like, and play in the SPL. Mm, yeah, I might do that. And five past 10 and I'm ringing him back going, forget that, will you? <laughs> I've been sacked. <laughs> I've been sacked. But oh, it makes no sense. You just get on with it, don't you? And got went, went back to my flat in Scotland, packed up my stuff and... I was like a student. Yeah. <laughs> all, my, all my cars like yeah, roof rack. Yeah. Yeah. Some roof rack with a trophy on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Drove, drove home. And... So what's next then? Because obviously you're not you've um, out of a missed job. Out, minute, missed out you? on one this week. So uh, from feedback, I was close with that. Um, had a couple of offers two weeks ago um, that just weren't quite right for me personally. Yeah. But... 
Yeah, just want to try and get back in and uh, have a go again. Are you, because... are, you, are you ready to go again now? Then? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's only so many times you can clean your garage and do yeah. the garden, isn't there? You know? Be at home at the weekends oh. with your missus. And... No, well, to be fair, I've managed to escape that one because I do a bit of radio, like, say, for Radio Lanks and Radio Manchester, oh, so they've been good. So, yeah, try and get back in. So before be, before we end it, yeah. um, who is... Who's the best player you that you've that you've seen on a pitch? Like coached, work with. It can be any. It could be someone you've worked with who you never expected to go on and do that and reach um, the heights, or someone who you've been on the sideline and it can be on the opposition and you've just oh, wow. sat back. Well, and good just question. Thought, wow. The the best one I've worked with um, was Tom Huddleston. I yeah. worked with him from under under twelve to under. Under 16, I was his taxi driver. He lived in Nottingham. I lived in Nottingham. And I used to pick him up and take him. I'm still waiting. I should invoice him. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, He's at Man United now. He's at Man United. Yeah. I went and had uh, a, a, a brew with him about a month ago because like, he's transitioning into... See, I think that's a great idea. So like, obviously the Prem Clubs now are bringing in older ex-pros uh, ex to come yeah. and play in the 21 games. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, it, it's going the back to what lads, how we that he was training and playing, and people yeah. were putting what a life that is. Yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's to it's educate massive. the younger lads yeah. on the pitch, just like when we grew up and you would have he played, played reserve games, you played reserve pros. game. Yeah. yeah, I played against Jan Mulby and John Barnes for Liverpool. Do you know wow. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've got my reserve team manager going, get close to my way. I can't get close <laughs> to him. <laughs> Jan Mulby and John Barnes, yeah. but what you learn, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think it's great. So, but he was. The, the technique he had, both left foot and right foot, yeah, was phenomenal. Right to, work, to work with him was was really good. And to see him go... He made his debut at Derby at 16 when we were there at 16. Did so He was yeah. always a big lad as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. afro, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and uh, he's got pure technique. Yeah. And so he was good. So he's and, the best one you've worked yeah, with. Yeah, And then, obviously, I've been fortunate with the, the lads at Blackburn, Tom Kearney, he, again... Technical, he's at Fulham now. Yeah, oh. yeah. And um, he was, he was a, you know, to to watch him work and how he manipulated the ball was, was really good. And then, like I say, Jordan Rhodes, scoring goals yeah. and watching, just watching him in training, just how he'd finish and every day. And did he work on day, that every day? Every did day, he? every he day, every day, that. and every session, small sided games, scoring goals. It's no surprise that he no. does what he's done and. You know, people always say what you can't do, but wow, he can score goals, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, so they, they would be my standouts, I think. And then I have a, a an emotional attachment to your likes of Jason Lowe, Grant Anleys, because they came through the system and went on yeah. to play. Help you out uh, as well a little at, bit. At didn't first they? Time, yeah. yeah. So brilliant. Yeah, it's good. Well, mate, it's been it's been brilliant to hear. No, thank you very yeah, much. Brilliant to yeah. hear your, your stories no. and your experiences. Yeah, and it's been good. Isn't it mad how everything just fits? So like you walk, you're walking into somewhere, someone's walking out, you get a job, and then next thing, you're... Uh, it's them sliding door moment. I've like, yeah. mentioned it all the time, and and I touched on it a little bit in the in the at the start that it doesn't just happen. You work, you oh, work yeah. under twelves. You yeah. work at coaching. Yeah. You work on like your courses. You meet people. All of a sudden, you build a network around yeah. you where people can see that you're working hard and you're working on your trade. And then that's how the opportunities happen. They don't just yeah. you don't just get a knock at the door. No, no. You've got to get yourselves out there, aren't you? And it's doing your apprenticeship all of over it again. Is, yeah. It really is. And then well, you've like got that, to stay at twenty-five year old, yeah. you were doing four coaching sessions in the morning every yeah. morning, then going back out at no, night and yeah. Saturday, just, Sunday. You know, yeah, it's not handy to you. Gotta... No wonder I got divorced, though. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that's a bad work schedule. Yeah, right? but you've got Morning, but that's... afternoon. But that was it then. That was it. It's yeah. completely. People yeah. have changed the completely the but dynamics. But that's of how the you get to five years later. Yeah, yeah. Managing Blackburn yeah, Rovers. Yeah, yeah. And then you signing signing that big contract in India, business class. Oh, business class. Yeah. I don't know about the big contract. <laughs> <laughs> but no, mate. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thanks very much. Cheers.